you all for coming this afternoon. Um, my name is Andy Ponce, and I'm with Alta California Regional Center. So first up, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Lorraine Candidate from the Sacramento Employment Training Agency. Thank you, Andy. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. We are so excited that you're here today, and you've come to join us in this event. Um, I am going to present Kathy Kosick, who is the Executive Director of Sacramento Employment and Training Agency. And you may know us by our acronym of SETA. She's going to come up and uh, give you a little information and then make an introduction. Before Kathy comes, I would like for you to remember that we do have an art exhibit out in the courtyard. Uh, and we want you to take a look at some of the beautiful work that participants at the Southside Art Center and the Short Center North have made. And you need to know that if anything out there just grabs your heart, they will be so happy if you purchase one of those items. So we will ask Kathy to come forward at this time. National Disability Employment Awareness Month. And I, I just put a plug for out there. I bought a pen today. There's lots of things you can buy out there, so please check it out sometime during the afternoon. Uh, as most of you know, Congress designated the month of October as National Disability Employment Awareness Month. And the theme for this year's event is Talent Has No Boundaries, Workforce Diversity, includes workers with disabilities. So this year is the 20th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And SETA, Second Employment Training Agency, along with our partners, we include Alta California Regional Center, the Center for Excellence and Development of Disabilities at the UC Davis Mind Institute, the California Employment Development Department, and Crossroads Diversified Services join our nation in the focus to increase public awareness of the contributions of workers with disabilities and to improve employment opportunities to all individuals. Assembly member Wesley Chesbro, formerly California Senator Chesbro, has been a dedicated public servant for the rights and quality of life for people with disabilities. During his tenure in the state senate, Mr. Chesbro authored legislation for housing for indiv individuals with special needs. He has served in many positions, including as a California Mental Health Oversight and Accountability Commission member, and he, he has been a board member for Open Door Community Health Centers and the Humble Bay Housing and, and Development Corporation. So I ask you to join me in welcoming and honoring the Honorable Assembly Member Wesley Tesper. Well, thank you very much for that kind of introduction. It's a real pleasure to be here today to help celebrate National Disability Employment Month. It's important that we set aside specific times to recognize issues such as employing people with disabilities. Now, that said, it sure will be nice when the day comes uh, when we reach the level of awareness uh, that we no longer need a special month to draw attention uh, up to the needs uh, of persons with disabilities and uh, it's just uh, a normal part of our uh, everyday life that um, our friends and neighbors who have disabilities uh, are beside us in school and at work and at the grocery store and throughout our lives. Uh, the erroneous stereotype of a person with a disability as someone who is unemployable or who can't work or who uh, for some reason might present a liability uh, couldn't be further from the truth. And I know that from personal experience. Um, if you speak with a person with a disability, they will tell you that they want the same things that all of us want. Uh, that is a place to live you know, on their own if possible, uh, but friends, family, and of course a job, the ability to support themselves and to do meaningful work. Uh, those are the basic things that I think we all strive for in our lives and, and uh, they're the things that everybody I've ever met with a disability also wants. Uh, my personal observation is that 
the limitations, this is true in all walks of life, but I think it's especially true of persons with disabilities. The limitations that people feel in terms of what they can achieve are usually artificial. They've been imposed by family or society uh, and self-doubt that gets planted. And my observation from working with people of, with various disabilities is that, uh, and, and again, it's what's true with all of us, if you open the door and you say, let's see how much you can achieve, uh, almost always the person is capable of achieving far more than they thought they could or the people around them thought that they could. And so it's so important for us to not place those artificial limitations and and um, encourage and support persons with disabilities uh, to try to, to, to grow and to uh, uh, become self-sufficient in every possible way that they can. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, we'll all find that they are capable uh, of much, much more, just like all of us are, if we're encouraged and given a nurturing and supportive environment. Uh, one of the many reasons employment is such a big issue for many of us, not just persons with disabilities, is because it's through employment that most of us receive our health coverage. And so unemployment presents a multitude of problems beyond the obvious ones that, you, that many of us think of. Only 14% of working age Californians with developmental disabilities are currently employed. And we like to think of ourselves as a progressive state, but the national average is 20%. So we're behind the national average, and that's really kind of a shocking number to me. Uh, we need to do a lot better. If employment is where most of us receive our health insurance coverage, uh, and only 14% of adult Californians with disabilities are employed, uh, that could mean that close to 86% of those people who are unemployed either don't have health insurance because uh, unless they're covered by a family member or they're dependent on a government uh, health uh, insurance program. While it's unacceptable to have so many Californians without health coverage, it's also unacceptable to have such a large portion of our society ready to go to work and yet facing discrimination in hiring. However, we've come a long way in this struggle. As few as 30 or 40 years ago, a discussion as we're having today would probably be very, very different. In fact, it wouldn't be happening at all. It actually wasn't until 1975 that children with disabilities gained the right to go to school and get an education in the same classroom with their counterparts who uh, don't have disabilities. Uh, we have come a long, long ways. In the 19th century, many cities in this country, and this is shocking to think about today, but it was not very long ago, uh, passed ordinances that excluded people with visible disabilities from appearing in public. Hard to believe that one of these, uh, the very first of these laws was passed in San Francisco, which is now a city that's considered at the forefront of human rights in many, many ways. Fortunately, much of this has changed, and I think it's important when we're feeling frustration about the pace of change and the need to make things better, to remember that we're on a continuum and things are getting better, and that they, in the past, um, have, have not been what they are. My wife, because of her multiple sclerosis, when we travel uh, frequently, needs to use a wheelchair so that she can see the sights. Uh, she can walk, but she just can't cover a lot of territory. And when we went to Europe, we discovered that in many European countries, you don't see people on the streets with disabilities. It's really shocking and surprising. Um, and it makes you feel a little better that we have made some progress, that we've, um, we've uh, begun to provide accommodations in different ways for people with varying types of disabilities. Research demonstrates that hiring people with disabilities is good for business. Not only are people with disabilities reliable, productive, and show up on time, they provide diversity and bring a positive attitude to the workplace. And actually, you know, working and living alongside persons with disabilities is part of all of us overcoming our stereotypes. So each of you who have some form of disability who are out there in the workplace, you're really kind of pioneers for future persons with disabilities because the more uh, all of us understand about your capabilities, the more open-minded and supportive we will be. And so your role as a, a role model is really important. Employers report lower turnover and higher retention when they hire workers with developmental disabilities. Productivity is high and absenteeism is low. And hiring people with developmental disabilities tends to promote a positive corporate image for business as well. There are also federal tax incentives for hiring persons with disabilities and what, what business person isn't looking uh, to improve their bottom line, especially in this economic environment that we're in. People with developmental disabilities have so much to offer on a wide variety of levels. It's important for those of us in government and private life to promote this and to serve as role models as well, to show that it, we feel it's good for our office or for our business to have uh, persons with disabilities working in our, you know, on our staffs and in our offices. 
And if we're going to hire and promote the employment of people with disabilities, we need to look beyond their productive working years and also consider the retirement question. I mentioned healthcare earlier, and I also mentioned, I, I was talking about how persons with disabilities want all the same things as the rest of us. Well, uh, everyone who spends a lifetime working hard on the job has a right to look forward towards retirement. So we need to also start thinking about putting a system in place that adequately provides for that at the end of a working life of a person with disability. Pensions and retirement packages are dwindling, as we know, uh, but people with disabilities need to be included in that discussion. In my office in the state capitol, we've had the honor of working with a most impressive young lady who also stands as an excellent example of the kind of employee that I've been talking about. Uh, Jaylene Johnson started as an intern in my office back in February. Uh, she quickly uh, integrated right into our office environment. Uh, she was uh, such an excellent intern that I offered her a job when she, uh, when she, uh, and she began in September. She's been working in my office now for several months. However, I have to say she doesn't show up on time. She shows up early, every day, at least 10 or 15 minutes early of work. Uh, I'll let her talk about how much, how she feels about work, but I would think that showing up early every day means that this is somebody who likes to come to work. Uh, I have the feeling if you're uh, privately to ask my staff who the most popular person in the office uh, is, it wouldn't be me, it wouldn't be any of them, it would be Jaylene. Uh, every day that she comes into the office, she has a positive attitude, she's hardworking, and she's reliable. Any office or workplace uh, would be fortunate to have Jaylene as part of the team. So I thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today, and it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Jaylene Johnson. Jaylene. Hi, my name is Jaylene Johnson. I'm a teenager in the office. I'm a
I am a developmental pediatrician and the director for the Center for Excellence in Developmental Disabilities here at the Mind Institute. And it's just my pleasure to have you all here to welcome you to our home, the Mind Institute, um, to see how many successful um, individuals we have here and so many dedicated employers. So it's really a pleasure to help host this. And I wanted to thank Jaylene for all her hard work, for being brave enough to talk in front of all of you. And I wanted to give her a thank you, which is a book, uh, The Art at the Mind Institute. Um, as you are spending time in our building, please take time to look at the art. It's all been done by individuals with developmental disabilities. And we pick some of them and put them into a, sort of a coffee table book of art. And I also have one for your boss, Assemblyman Jasper, to thank him for all his hard work in supporting employment for individuals with developmental disabilities. So you can take this.
Jackie Rodriguez with the Bureau of Reclamation. We're a federal agency under the Department of the Interior. And I work in the HR office. I'm the Disabilities Employment Coordinator. We have field offices in the 17 western states. And we've been concentrating a lot of our efforts going out to the community. Um, we've attended a few EDD centers, uh, we go to the Department of Rehabilitation, and we try to teach clients, counselors, um, the process of getting an employment, an employment with, the federal, with the federal agency. That can be a tricky process for a lot of people. And so we're trying to educate everyone in the community on how to uh, find federal employment. One of the things that we do is we educate our current workforce, employees and supervisors, on disability sensitivity issues. We provide training for all of our employees. I'm also the reasonable accommodation program manager, so when we do hire individuals with disabilities, I make sure I get in contact with them, their supervisor, and make sure they're provided anything they need in order to be successful. So uh, we have had a lot of success. Um, it's building relationships with many of the organizations that are here today. So. Please feel free to come and see me afterwards if you're interested in us coming out to your organization and presenting information on federal employment opportunities. We have uh, a Schedule A Hiring Appointment Authority. It's a non-competitive process. It's really easy um, to use, and we are trying to educate our supervisors and managers to use that process. So again, um, feel free to come and see me. I have my business cards, and we're willing to go out and present information and you guys can even come out here to our federal building and present information as well. So, other than that, I'll turn it over to Marty. Uh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here uh, today. Uh, and it really is a pleasure to represent the medical center. The medical center really uh, strives to have a workforce that's reflective of the, uh, the community. And certainly people with disabilities are uh, very much a part of that. Um, I manage the Food and Nutrition uh, Services Department at the Medical Center, which we provide uh, food uh, to the patients and to the staff and the visitors, and we also have clinical dietitians that provide services to the, uh, uh, to the inpatients and to the, to the community. Um, one of the things that's unique about our department is we've had a uh, relationship with Alliance for almost 25 years. And uh, as our department has grown and as the medical center has grown, we've expanded that relationship. And I, it's been a, a great experience for me, and I really see it as a, as a partnership. Uh, I'm very impressed not only with the, uh, the employees that uh, in Alliance uh, you know, brings to us. Uh, they have a lot of uh, a very high work ethic. They you know, really don't have attendance problems you know, with, the, you know, with their staff. Uh, they work well with other people, and they've integrated and really have become part of our family. And I think uh, when something when Chesbro said, uh, you know, someday that uh, he hopes that it's just natural that people with disabilities are seen, you know, in, in the workplace and in the community. Um, I've seen that for over 20 years here at the Met Center, and it's just been something that we've done on an ongoing basis. Um, and I, I really, again, I just, it's been a pleasure, and I really can't recommend it. If you're an employer and you're not involved in these type of programs, I would really urge you to get involved. It is definitely um, you know, well worth it as an employer, but it's also well worth it to the people that participate in the program. Uh, we've had um, people actually graduate from the Alliance program and come to work in uh, the university in my department in environmental services, and they, are getting benefits. They, you know, they have a job and they get benefits, and they're eligible for retirement. And it's a, a, a it's just a wonderful experience. They, you know, and I almost forgot to say this, but I really want to make a point of this: is that the not only is it good for me, but uh, for the doctors and for the residents and for the nursing staff that come into our facilities, um, they know the the staff from the alliance, and they really consider them to be. Uh, part of the medical center and part of the family. And uh, so thank you very much. Hello, I'm Jenny Rice. I uh, am an employment representative for Safeway. Uh, my job is to uh, oversee and assist with the hiring for the many stores in the Sacramento area, as well as up through um, um, Reading. Chico, Ridley, those, that's my territory. Um, I work with many uh, different uh, 
uh, agencies. I work with Pride, I work with uh, an Alliance, the Lincoln Tra Training Center. Um, we have many, many great employees that work for us that have uh, disabilities and our communities out there really appreciate the fact. I've had many people stop me and say, thank you for hiring this person, they're so great, they're the, one of the best courtesy clerks out there and they are very dedicated, they are very hardworking. Um, and you know, we try to educate and we also try to uh, get everybody that we work with on board to getting these people into our, our workforce and making sure that they become uh, you know, happy individuals where they are productive in the community as well as feeling uh, independent and, you know, they have benefits. We at Safeway offer benefits, we offer retirement, and there's a lot of opportunity for them, to, for everyone to work at Safeway and, and become, you know, independent. So, um, if you, if I haven't, if you don't know who I am and you want to make contact with me, please come and see me afterwards as well so that way we can get in touch and try to get some of your your uh, your clients on board. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jim Harry. I'm with uh, Task Technology. It's what the TASQ stands for. Uh, actually, it's uh, uh, an acronym for Teamwork, Accountability, Service, and Quality. As a, a company that was started in a garage on Roseville. Uh, about uh, well, 15, 20 years ago. I've been with the company for uh, for 10 years now, um, and we're actually uh, wholly owned by uh, First Data Corporation, uh, which is uh, actually the largest uh, credit card processor uh, in the nation. And uh, what we do is we, we deploy, uh, send out credit card uh, uh, machines to all over the United States. And we've integrated uh, uh, clients from uh, Pride Industries for just over nine years now. Uh, in my area, we started is where we started this, and uh, I've had uh, a direct relationship with uh, uh, the clients from Pride and the, the folks at Pride Industries uh, for that time, uh, taking care of some of the uh, some of the cleaning of uh, uh, the equipment, and uh, we've actually uh, gone to the point of uh, uh, bringing out uh, some of the process engineers to identify different processes that we have that. Uh, we could actually uh, utilize their clients because, uh, as everyone said so far, uh, reliability seems to be uh, kind of a, um, uh, a standard uh, with many of the people that we're um, dealing with with disabilities, and it's no different for us. Uh, folks have been very reliable, and uh, we've actually found other jobs that would allow some of our full-time employees to focus on uh, the service that they need to provide so that we can actually uh, um, uh, reduce costs. Uh, we've, uh, we've actually reduced costs, we've uh, reduced overtime completely in one department uh, by utilizing the uh, clients from Pride to, uh, to help us. And so there's, there's just a multitude of opportunities. And uh, anytime we have a special project that comes up, um, we, we always look to uh, bring in the folks from Pride because um, even though we strive for quality, uh, we found that uh, some of the things that they're able to do uh, are far, far superior in quality to what our full-time employees can do. Uh, I, I wholeheartedly recommend, and I'm very passionate about this, um, uh, the use of uh, um, folks with disabilities uh, in a, a warehouse situation. They've been just remarkable to work with. Again, I've, I've dealt with them directly for whole time that they've been there, along with uh, providing some opportunities for them to uh, work with our product off-site at their location so that uh, uh, it becomes a, an easier um, opportunity for them to, to deal with their clients. So we, we actually have operations at both sites. We have a, uh, uh, another facility in uh, Georgia, in Marietta, Georgia, where we use uh, a group known as Tommy Novus. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but um, we've actually been uh, in the process of replicating the model that we have here because it's that important and we've just built a new building out there and we want to make sure that we have exactly the same model we have uh, in Georgia that we have here because it's been so successful. Uh, I just really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you if you have any questions, you can, uh, especially if it's uh, operations, that sort of thing. 
Um, by all means, let me know. I'd be happy to uh, share some of my experiences with you. Thanks. At this point, we'd like to go ahead and open up the discussion to the audience. If any of you had any uh, specific questions for the panelists, feel free uh, to go ahead and ask. I don't believe that we have a hand mic available, so uh, you may need to speak up. No questions? All right. Well, then what we'll do is we will go ahead and take like a, a, a 10 minute break. Um, if any of you had any questions, feel free to come up and speak to our panelists, and then we'll have a question. Yeah. Uh, so this is just to the panel in general. Uh, so what are your thoughts about uh, when it comes to getting other employers uh, more on board with hiring people with disabilities? Um, what, what are some of the thoughts of the best way to go about doing that? I think sometimes, you know, when I love personal uh, working in the field of social services for a number of years. Uh, my the, the view gets some kind of skewed, or maybe you're not you're not using the correct words when you're talking to employers, or you're not using you know you're not meeting their their, their thinking perhaps in, in uh, helping them become more interested in in, in, in hiring people with disabilities. So, what kind of thoughts you have on? I, I don't mind answering that if it's all right with you. I, uh, um, I remember when we integrated uh, uh, Pride into our operations, uh, the most important thing we did, I believe, is we educated the people that we have on staff uh, currently. And uh, that was handled by our Human Resources Department, uh, along with uh, some folks from Pride Industries. And I'm not sure who, uh, what other agencies were involved, but, uh, uh, but it was very successful. So that uh, uh, so that both sides were comfortable with uh, with that integration, and it has been. I, I tell you, if you walk out on the floor, you can't tell um, who works for who. It's uh, it's it's very much like a family. Uh, everyone uh, uh, works side by side. You know, I, I also think that um, businesses are going through tough times, you know, right now. And I think one of, one of the, uh, the advantages of, um, I know there's a lot of people looking for jobs, but I think one of the advantages of hiring people with disabilities is that of uh, the dependability. And I think especially if, if you are linked with, um, whether it's private industries or in alliance, uh, you know, which, which we're linked with, you have a support system there. You have a support structure that uh, helps you succeed as an employer, and it also helps the individual succeed. And I'm not sure if most businesses are really aware of that. I mean, I, I really can't tell you how impressed I am, not only uh, you know with the quality of, of, of you know the, the people that come to us as you know as, as employees, but also the support you know that they receive uh, you know from their alliance. And it's and it's not just the uh, you know the, the the clients that receive that support. It's also the businesses. I think it, you have to develop a partnership, uh, you know, with uh, you know with that organization. And if you do that, I think you're going to be they're going to definitely see benefits, you know, as, as far as reduce, reduce turnover and um, uh, and I think just sort of continuity and a high quality of, of work in. In, in my end of the business, which is the food service end, which is sometimes difficult, you know, to achieve, and I believe that's probably true with some of the other food service organizations, um, you know, in town here.
they're the ones that introduced me to this equipment. And so just went online, requested the cap. We got it in two to four weeks. Um, we've, but a lot of times the reasonable accommodation is not even about equipment. It's just someone wants more flexibility in their work schedule. So they need, you know, flexibility. They want to come in as late as nine, maybe get off at six. And that's fine because the federal government, at least for our agency, we can come in anywhere between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. So we already have that flexibility in place. It's just a matter of making sure the supervisor is aware of that. That's already there. It's available for all employees. And so we also have telework where employees can work from home one to two days a week. And so a lot of times it's accommodations that don't cost any money. It's just making sure that the supervisor is aware and educating the supervisor about the flexibilities that we do have and that it's okay for a person to work from home two to three times a week. It's okay for the person to come in at 9 o'clock in the morning. So. All right. Well, we'd like to thank the panelists for making themselves available for us this afternoon. We can give them a And at this time, I think we'll go ahead and take a 10-minute uh, break. But uh, just to remind you, please, if you haven't yet, please check out the art exhibit we have going on in the courtyard. We have our information exhibits out here in front and outside the room. And uh, also, feel free to, uh, to connect with our panelists here. All right, thank you. See you in 10 minutes. And in honor of your participation in our National Disability Employment Awareness Month event, we present the Certificate of Appreciation to, the first one is for Assemblyman Weston Chesbro, and he had to leave, we will see that he gets it. Uh, the next one is for Dr. Robin Hansen, and I believe she has had to leave as well. The next one is for Jaylee Johnson, and we'll get that to her. And we have a presentation signed by Mr. Kevin McCarty for Kathy Cossack. And we have presentations for our panel members. We certainly want to thank our panel for coming and sharing the benefit of their experiences in the employment arena and hiring persons with disabilities. Thank you for your contributions. And we have a certificate for Marty Gothard.
from EDD, if you will come forward, Janice. EDD is one of the partners with this event, and Janice has been with us for the, all three years with this event. Yeah, thank you, Janice. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And this year, we were privileged to have this event at this wonderful building, the Mind Institute. Isn't this a lovely place, a lovely facility? And the person who was instrumental in making that happen was Jan Sharon Paulus with uh, the Mind Institute. Is Sharon in the room? She is probably up working as we speak. Yes, okay. But we want that to be all of the hard work she has done to make this happen. And the person who has also been with this for three years uh, is from SETA, and that is Ellen Franz. Thank you, Ellen. And we have someone who came on board with this project this year, and no, I believe she was here last year as well, but she had a major role in this project this year. We used her uh, experience and her expertise, and I believe we even took up a lot of time uh, from her weekend, and that is Nancy Hogan. She is a person to the team who is uh, on board with uh, SETA and she also works in the <coughs> career center that is uh, the, where the host is Crossroads Diversify. She has come on board and she is responsible for the wonderful caterer that we have this year and that is Sharon Cross. Where are you Sharon? <laughs> person to our team who gave us the benefit of a lot of her expertise. We appreciate her so much, and that is Doris Manship. She is with SETA. <laughs> this year we had a new organization come on board. Uh, with this project, and we are so happy for the contributions that they have made to us, and that's Alta Regional, and this certificate goes to Andy Ponce from Alta Regional. And also from Alta Regional is Micha Wong. We had a couple of people who were a part of this program who are uh, no longer with us. Uh, one was Carol Layton, who was uh, in the program in the very beginning days, and Sandra Kinsey, who was the lead in the program, and um, neither one of them are a part of the agency, but we certainly value the contributions that they made uh, to this project. A lot of the work that uh, has gone into this uh, was from their wonderful, wonderful uh, work. We want you to, to make sure you notice the, ta the table centerpieces. Beautiful artwork uh, made by the participants uh, from the art centers. Take a look at that. And thank you again for coming. Uh, help yourself to the refreshments. And if you haven't had a chance to look at our exhibits in the courtyard, please do so. And you have another opportunity to talk to our panel members. Thank you. Good
Well, hello everyone. My name is Nathaniel Tucker from DDSO Employment Plus, and we are sitting here with Miss Lorraine. Did I say that right? Yes, that is correct. Lorraine Canada. Yeah. So, can you please tell us why are we here today? Yes, we are here for Sacramento Employment and Training Agencies and our partners, a celebration of October being the month of National Disability Employment Awareness Month. And our presentation today uh, was to make uh, employers out there, community uh, partners, uh, to make community leaders aware of the awesome services and jobs that uh, persons with di disabilities can perform and the wonderful benefit they can be to our nation. Nice. Um, do you believe in this uh event that just happened do you think your you guys' word came out I believe the panel members did an awesome uh, job of presenting their experience in hiring persons with disabilities um, also Assemblyman Chesbro presented a lot of good information about how um, persons with disabilities make a valuable contribution to the workforce so I think today's um, presentation really helped get uh, the message out there absolutely and I mean I know it's I know it's a, a month but I think this should be aware every month I mean that's just my personal opinion uh, because I think there's a lot of uh, a lot a lot of talented people out there that really has a, a gift to yes. to share with people and to to be informational and to really just get out there and, and being known because I know like back then you know we really didn't have a voice at the time and then now that this is all happening it's like I'm just in here I'm blown like literally blown away I mean I'm pretty sure it's the same for you as well also right Yes, this it. You're right. It should be um, an, a yearly, an all year uh, awareness event. But hopefully, by targeting one month uh, to bring attention to this fact, will help keep the message going all year long. Totally, totally agree with you there. Well, I want to thank you for this wonderful interview and for your time to talk with me and the wonderful people out there. We'll see how awesome this is, and, and hopefully we'll come back next year and the word will get out more and more. Well, thank you, Nathaniel, and thank you for your organization coming to share in our event. Well, it's a definite pleasure for us. So this is Nathaniel Tucker sitting here for DDSO Employment Plus. We're signing out. Take care. <laughs>